welcome to my channel. I'm Kim Chamberlain, the Canal Town Stitcher, and happy Sunday, May 16th, um, 2021. And I hope everybody had a great and productive week this week. I know I did. I did a lot of new starts, a lot of stitching, and I designed another piece. So excited. All right, so I have just a tiny little bit of haul, a little bit of um, some previous whips, and a bunch of new starts. So I'm really excited. So first things first, new thing, positive thing, whatever you wanna call it. In my world, any new thing is a positive thing. So I um, was watching Kimberly Jolly do the Fat Quarter Shop uh, Wednesday live. I can never watch it live because I teach. So I always have to watch it later. So I was watching it later in the day and um, Kimberly was doing a tutorial, like a quick tutorial on how to um, how to thread your floss onto a floss ring or onto a floss bitty so that you can just pull it out. And that has been like a problem for me. I always put them on, I had always put them on bobbins so I can actually show you like what mine look like. So like I've been stitching for almost 30 years. So I always put them on bobbin cards. So like this. And then it has the number and then I can just pull so I pull it like this and it's easy to get it off um, but she was showing like how you can take it off of this and put it onto a floss bitty so that you only pull out one string at a time and so I am looking forward to trying that I need to watch the tutorial again because I was like in the middle of a of a break and I wasn't really in a place where I could actually like try it but I am going to be looking into that and trying that so that I can do something better because you would not be you would not believe what a mess my floss looks like right now because I never kitted up anything before like I never um I never put projects together in a kit like anytime I needed a floss I would just go to my tubs and I would Pull it out the color that I needed and it pretty much sat next to me like so I could always just go through them but now that I'm kidding projects up I definitely want to do that plus I have my Cricut so I'm going to be looking at um, some tutorials to make some floss bitties myself uh, with my Cricut so I will be looking forward to doing that um, sometime soon uh, there's six weeks left of school and we go camping the first week we're out of school we're going to Long Island for a week and then I'm gonna be home a lot this summer and just puttering around the house and putting our um, new we're putting a couple of new bedrooms down into our basement for our boys and so then I will have a dedicated craft space upstairs, which I'm looking forward to because I told my husband, like, I have a corner here, I have a place over here, I have stuff in the basement, and I just want to have everything, like, together combined into, like, my own space. And now that I'm designing cross-stitch pieces, I really want to have a design studio spot so that I can design my work and um, have a place where I can keep all the supplies to like mod to do the stitch modeling because right now it's just me. So, and I've only designed two pieces. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see if that um, grows or, or starts to take off, then I'm definitely gonna wanna have some more space for those things. So um, in the meantime, right now, I'm just kind of like here, there and everywhere with all my stuff. And so, and I have a, a knitting project that I'm working on, but I, I didn't work on it this week, so I'm not going to show it. But I will be showing that because as we get closer to fall, it's my first shawl. And um, I'm actually going to be getting into the lacing part really soon. I've never laced while knitting. I've only ever done knit purl. So I know how to do the, the garter stitch, gardener stitch, garter stitch maybe. That's what it's called. I know how to do that. And I know how to do like the... Um, I know how to do an easy chain, like a chain in knitting. <laughs> I'm not describing that very well, but like 
I definitely want to get back into my knitting so that will probably be happening over the summer so that I'll have a shawl to wear in the fall when it gets cool and I'm really looking forward to that so um and the haul that I bought today is not cross stitching related but it is cross stitching related so when I get to that you'll see what I mean so, but that's my great new thing this week. So thank you, Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop for doing that. It's on this past Wednesday, May 13th, no, 12th, May 12th, um, Fat Quarter Shop live stream. And um, I also got very inspired by her that day to buy more charts from Lori Holt. <laughs> so um, clearly I am addicted to cross stitch all of a sudden. My husband says to me the other day, like, you haven't done this in 20 years and now all of a sudden you're buying all the things and you're always at the cross stitching shop and you never wanna go anywhere because you always wanna stitch. And I said, well, I'll still go places with you. I still wanna go places. I can take my cross stitch with me wherever we go. So that'll be fine. And, um, you know, so like today he's outside working in the yard and so I'm getting a little bit of, um, free time to to film and um, I'm gonna be going out later to buy some floss for my new design because I realized that um, when I designed it I didn't have all the flosses here that I need so I have to go and get them and then I might be making some color changes based on how um, the floss all looks together and then hopefully I will um, be starting to stitch the model for that um, maybe this week maybe next week it'll be one of my new starts for next week we'll see so very exciting I have mania and whipco I did work on my whipco pieces this week but first I'm going to show you two previous whips so we'll get right into that so these two whips are um whips that I have been working on um that are not whipco that are not part of my new starts um but I worked on them because I have one of them is for my son and his birthday is in um, a couple of weeks and so I um, actually his birthday is a week from Monday so there's no way that this is going to be done by his birthday but at least I'll have something that I can show him so it's by Geo Creates Geo Creations on Etsy and it is um, star characters these are all Star Wars characters so right now, I am stitching, let me see here if I can get that a little bit better for you. I'm stitching Chewbacca right now. I'm gonna be stitching Han Solo, Yoda, and Darth Vader. And actually, I might be stitching um, I think it's Atticon, Atticon, I don't know. Anyways, oh, and C-3PO, if you wanted. He has not seen any of these. I just said, who are your favorite Star Wars characters? And he said, Chewbacca and Han Solo first. And then he mentioned Darth Vader and C-3PO. I don't know. We'll see. Anywho, Chewbacca and I have not had a very friendly relationship. Um, he is full of confetti stitching and he was driving me crazy, like absolutely crazy. So I actually had to put him away for a whole week because I was not in the mood to like deal with all the color changes in his head alone. There's four colors in just his head. So I did sit down yesterday and I worked on him. And here is my progress. So he is coming along. I think I can have him done by the end of the day today, actually. This is on 28 count legacy linen. I believe it's picture this plus. And I love it. I love the the color and the variation in this fabric. I think it's gonna be perfect for these little um, 
Star Wars characters. This was a uh, scrap piece of fabric that I got from Happy House Needleworks. And so I was excited to be able to use it for something like that. Okay, so the second previous whip that I'm gonna show you is um, my first new design. So I did stitch page, um, some of page two, not all of page two, but some of page two. And I, remember, I can't show you the chart, but this is my own design, and I'm hoping to have this done by the end of May. There's still a needle in this because I was stitching this and had and got interrupted. So um, we all understand that as moms, right? <laughs> Actually, my youngest right now is dealing with a ton of allergies because my husband had him weed whacking yesterday. Oh my gosh, he was up half the night with his allergies. It was so bad. Um, so anyways, we always get those interruptions, but this is stitched on 14 count gray, Ada. It is stitched with the only three DMC colors that I, um, decided to design it with. And I'm super excited. So I got two motifs done off of page two, and there's actually one and part of another that's in page two that I did not, um, start yet, but I was working on it, so... Hopefully I'll have more to show you next week, but here is my progress. So this is my own design, and I'm hoping that this will be available for sale at the end of May, 1st of June. So it is coming along so nicely. I love the way it looks. I love the way that this, these colors are on this gray and these motifs are coming out so good. And the name of this is USA Quaker. That's what I named it. So be on the lookout for USA Quaker. I'm hoping it will be available for sale on June 1st. Now don't ask me where it's gonna be available for sale because I plan to spend some time on Etsy and Instagram today trying to figure out where um, the best place for me to start is going to be in um, selling these designs. So I did put an investment into some software for um, designing and so I'm excited about that. Hopefully the charts will be easy to read and you will be able to get all of your materials and um, you'll be able to go and just buy the chart through um, Etsy or wherever as a PDF. Um, or print. I do have um, teenage children that said that they would be more than willing to help me print uh, designs to ship in the mail. And I may start kitting these up and sell them as full kits. So we will um, see how that goes. I'm excited. I think it's going to be amazing. And um, I can't wait to show you more progress on it as we go throughout the month. Hopefully by the end of the month of May, this will be complete and you'll be able to see the entire thing and then it will be ready for a sale on June 1st. That is my goal, June 1st, to have this up for sale. USA Quaker by Kim Chamberlain, so exciting. <laughs> I can't believe that, um, you know, like some of my dreams are possible hopefully. All right, let's talk about my new starts. So I already showed this last week, but I decided to show it again because it was a new start on Mother's Day and it is so beautiful and I'm so excited about it. And where is it? Let's see, I didn't, oh yes, it is right here. Okay, so this is for Signs of Spring. It is by Cottage Garden Samplings. It, I am part of the Crazy Annie Stitching, um, Club for These, um, A Time for All Seasons series. This one's number three. Um, in the series, I do have one and two that I do plan to stitch, but right now this one was like just calling out to me and I had to stitch it right away. As soon as I got it, I knew I was gonna stitch it. So this is for Signs of Spring. It is by Cottage Garden Samplings, and I love the robin. Makes me very happy. And I made a lot of progress on this last week, guys. So this is on Limestone, 32 count Lugana. And there it is. So I have um, the outline for the basket done. I'm working on the weaving. And I love it. 
this is stitching up so easily. I can't wait till it's done. I will be so happy when it's done. And I do plan on framing this. Um, I don't plan to um, do anything cutesy with it. I just plan to, to frame it. And it will come out every spring and it will stay out through the springtime. Because, like I said, I'm not a real, like, cutesy spring stitcher. I don't really like Easter eggs and, you know, chicks and bunnies and pastel colors. I really don't like pastel colors that much. I'm just not reminds me of my 80s childhood and I'm just not into it so um, whenever I see a pattern that um, will fit a season that has colors and and things on it that I appreciate I will um, I will try to find it and stitch it so this to me um, yells spring with the lily of the valley they're like the first flowers that sprout every year in our yard and with the robin so if this is perfect. This is exactly what I think of when I think of spring. And not that I have anything against people that like to have like pastels and things like that in their house. Like I'm, I'm not against it in anybody else's house. It's just not my style. All right. So then that was Sunday. Monday, I started um, Hope by Twin Peak Primitives. This is a freebie pattern that they have on their website so if you go to Twin Peak Primitives and you put in freebies you'll find it so here it is this is Hope I love this since the moment I saw it I knew I wanted to stitch it I'm stitching it on 32 count blue azure this is by Zweigert and this is an even weave and it is so soft and easy to use 32 count and this is my start so as you can see I did a middle start for this guy um, so yeah it's a lot of white so <laughs> I was like I'm gonna go to the bow so I started on the bow that night because it's a lot of white but I thought this was a good start I'll probably come back to this later in the month so I don't have a lot of new starts left I only wanted to start about 17 new projects so that I could work on some of my projects um, throughout the month in the later weeks of the month. And now that I have two new designs, I really want to make sure that I get those stitched up and ready for sale by June 1st. So my so that was my Monday start. My Tuesday start was Peace on Earth, also by Cottage garden samplings we've been watching a lot of modern family so every time I pull this out I think of the theme song to modern family because we didn't watch it like surprisingly it we didn't watch it when it was on TV my husband and I just didn't but now with our kids like we have a 16 year old and a 15 year old and they're understanding a lot of it and um, we sit down and we really enjoy it so this is peace on earth by Cottage Garden Samplings, and this is my favorite of all of my new starts this week. I love cardinals. They remind me of my mom. Sadly, she passed away. It'll be 12 years on June 3rd. It's hard to believe. She was so young. But I love cardinals. They remind me of her, and so... And none of this is ironed. I'm never going to be an ironer before I come on. I think I mentioned that once before. I don't even iron. I told my husband when we first got married, we've been married 21 years. I said, one thing that you should know about me is that I do not iron. I do not iron any of my clothes. I iron when I quilt. And I will iron these when I'm ready to finish them. Um, and I iron when I sew. So I have, I have ironing skills. I just prefer not to iron things. I don't know why. I just, it's never been me. But here's my start for Peace on Earth. I got a lot done in a few short hours. 
all of the lettering and part of the vine. This is gonna be stitched in all of the called for DMCs. This pattern calls for all um, gentle arts and I just did not want to make that investment. So this is on a 32 count smoky pearl linen. And it is by Wichelt. Which some people are like complaining about Wichelt, but this is nice and soft and easy to work with. So it's not very stiff. So I don't know. It feels comfortable to me. I love it. I think it's coming out really nice. And so there is that start for Tuesday. Wednesday I didn't start anything new. Wednesday I worked on stitching my USA Sampler, or Quaker, USA Quaker. That's what I'm calling it. So um, that's what I did on Wednesday. Then Thursday, I started Mouse of the House, it's by Twin Peak Primitives. It is a free chart on their website, so I don't, I'm gonna show you just their chart really quick because it's free and I can't find the cover photo for it. Um, but anyways, I'm just gonna flash it for you. So here it is, very quick. I don't know where the cover photo is. It's probably in my car because I stitched this. I started this when my daughter was at her horseback riding lesson, which happens on Thursday afternoons. And this is on 28 count almond, toasted almond linen. I don't know who it's by, but here's the little start. I love my little mouse. So cute. So I got the entire mouse done and I'm just working on the scarf and then I'm gonna do the candy corn and then the pumpkin. This I think I can have done by the end of the month. This is a fun little stitch. And all of these projects I was stitching in hand this week. So, um, I didn't need to hoop any of those. All right, so now that's all of my new starts for the week. So let's talk about my WIPCO projects. So on Friday, I worked on WIPCO, and on Saturday, I worked on WIPCO. And Saturday, I also worked on Chewy, Chewbacca. So let's talk about WIPCO numbers. So WIPCO is Jessie Marie Does Stuff, um, started WIPCO so that she would be able to work on some of her past projects that weren't getting as much love. So it's like a bingo board. I didn't bring mine over with me today. I usually have it to show it, but if you watch my previous videos, you'll see it. It's a board of 25, and then if you, you know, get a bingo, then you can reward yourself with something. And I said I was gonna reward myself with fabric when I get a bingo. So every month, Jessie calls two numbers. And this month, she called 19 and 22. And this is my first first month doing with go so the other numbers that she previously called I already X'd off a bunch of them because some of them I put like new starts in I put in um, finishes I put in um, you know things that I knew that I would be able to to keep up with um, so that I could also participate and keep those numbers on my board so and have the opportunity to get a bingo so um, 19 and 22 this week or this month um, I decided that I wanted to work 10 hours on each project. So that's my goal for the month is 10 hours. So on Friday, I took out number 19 for me, which is the, the most wonderful feast of the year. It's by Sue Hillis Designs. And I love this piece, but I have to tell you that I was a little bit apprehensive about it um, with the... Um, with the chief's feathers but then I decided that I was going to stitch those anyway I don't really feel that they're very controversial so I decided to stitch those so I love this one and I cannot wait to get this done but I have to tell you that this was my third start on this project so I actually restarted it on Friday this is what I had previously so this is 32 count standard by Weeks Dye Works. And I didn't have a big problem with this other than I don't think that this piece is big enough for the entire It's the Most Wonderful Feast of the Year. And also, 
I don't like how flimsy this linen is and it was hard to get it into the hoop and I just felt like it wasn't going to be like it feels it feels like a, a dinner napkin to me. That's kind, like kind of how the like the consistency of this linen is. It feels a little bit like a dinner napkin. It doesn't feel like it's going to be nice enough to like frame or like post or not post but like finish, I guess, is a better way to put it. So, last week when I was at Hobby House Needleworks, I bought some scrap fabric. I showed it all last week in my last video. But I bought this piece of 18 count, um, this piece of 18 count, Time Goes By. Is it by? I kept it in here. Um... I don't remember what it is. Maybe picture this plus. I can't remember. Anyways, it's 18 count Ada. And I was like, well, this is the right coloring, you know, and I, and it's definitely a nice, it's definitely a big piece. It's a 10 by 14. So I definitely knew that it would have room for it. So I did a restart on it's the most wonderful feast of the year. And I worked for two and a half hours on this. And here is my new start. And I love it. I am stitching one over one. And this is coming out so beautiful. So two and a half hours on this one for Whip Go for May. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to get the rest in the seven and a half hours on this. I can't wait to see how much I get done. So I'm looking at the little chief's hat or chief's headdress, uh, not hat headdress. I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> it's a headdress. So I'm working on that and then I will be getting into these. Uh, the, that checkered W is just so amazing to me and the pumpkin for the O. I just I can't wait to get to some of those motifs. They're just amazing and fun. So this you will see again next week because I plan to work on this. I only do new starts on Mondays to or Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So I can work on a previous whip Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, if that makes sense. So then that way I can keep up on my whip go. So that's number 19. So I think I'm going to make it. I'm hopeful that I'm going to make it for that. This has a lot of color changes to it. So again, it's a little bit slower because it's got a lot of color changes, but not as much confetti. I mean, there was a lot of confetti in this piece right here. But this is a little bit better. It's not as confetti heavy as that was. So I got that. And number 22 is actually an out of print chart from Keepsakes Calendar. And um, it's like from 1997 or 98. I can't remember. It might even be 99. I don't know. So anyways, I can't show you the chart. So this is going to be like a mystery stitch along for you because I can't show you the chart. I don't know who the designer is because they didn't list that on here anywhere. And it's called Patriotic Picnic. And it was supposed to be like a tray um, like goes in the bottom of like a serving tray. So I'm going to finish this, I think, in one of those um, large weaved basket trays and hang it in my dining room when I'm done. So I did work for this two hours at the beginning of May, and I worked on it for another two hours yesterday. And so I got some progress in, about a hundred and maybe 50 stitches, 150 stitches. Anyways, this is on 25 count Vintage Stormy Night Lugana. And there it is. So in my first video in May, I had only had um, three of the corners done. And yesterday, I finished this corner here. So this, oh, this is all, sorry. Maybe if I fold it like this, it'll be easier. There we go. So I finished this corner. And then I did all of the gold, all of this gold border yesterday. And this gold border, <laughs> there's a lot of stitching in this, guys. It's, it's going to be a while. But this gold border goes all the way around, 
And then in between that, like the next part, it's all red and white checkered and it's, um, it's all full stitched. So I figured it out. Just this one side here with the red and white checkered is like 350 stitches. So imagine all the way across and that's like the border that doesn't even get you to the actual motifs yet. But I've always liked this. I've had this um, this calendar since 1998. And I've always loved this chart. So I always knew that I wanted to stitch it. This was my New Year. Well, this was my New Year's Eve start. I started this on December 31st, um, 2020. So I feel like this can definitely be done in the within the year. I feel like if I, and especially since like, once my mania starts are done, I'm really not going to be starting much um, until July. So the whole month of June is going to be pretty much just focused on my previous widths. And of course my um, whatever designs. I'm stitching for my new designs. Whatever those are, which is so exciting. Alright, well I know what the next one's going to be, but okay. So let's talk about new starts for this week. So I'm going to be starting. Let me hang on a second. I'm going to go get my iPad. I'll be right back. A little bit of dead space for a minute. And just like that, I'm back. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start. This is my new year. This is my new new year. This is my new start for the week. I swear, guys, I do not fumble my words this much in real life. I'm a teacher and I I talk a lot, but for some reason, when I'm talking to you guys, I'm always like, Bleh. I'll get there though. All right. So this is where I need to be. I need to go into Etsy, so I can show you what sampler I'm going to be starting today. I am so excited about this, guys. I love this, and I believe I brought over, yes, I did, um, my color conversions for it. All right. Purchases and reviews. Guys, I think I'm going to have a pretty good hair day today. I don't usually have good hair days. My hair is naturally curly. It's usually a pain in the butt. But today, like on camera at least, I think it's looking pretty pretty. I don't know, not every day it looks this good. Just saying. All right, so it's called Quaker. It's a cross stitch pattern by Stitching Spell on Etsy. It's really, really beautiful. And so I think I'm gonna stitch it on a piece of 32 count Silvery Moon Lugana. And here it is. So this is what I'm going to stitch. It's absolutely stunning. But I decided I do not want to stitch with red. So this is what I decided I'm going to do. So here's my here's my fabric. Now I have a, a gray living room with a lot of tans. So we did, um, now it's gonna be in my way. Uh, <laughs> so we did a gray walls and we have um, natural like barn wood shelving and we have a lot of tans and gray and white plaid and our couch is completely tanned so I love the silvery moon because it's a very light shade of gray which will be perfect in like a white frame or a natural wood look frame and I decided that instead of doing the red and the two grays. I'm going to do the two grays as called for. And then I have 352, which is like a dark peach. So 
all these three. And then I also decided that I wanted to do some of the stitching with 353 as well, which is an even lighter peach. So this is my color palette for the Quaker by Stitching Spell on Etsy. This was a very inexpensive pattern. Just to let you guys know, it's right now it's priced for $3.25. So it's really affordable and it's so pretty. They have it stitched on a couple of different shades. So here it is stitched on gray, on like a lighter gray. So I think it'll be just fine on that silvery moon with those colors. So that's my start for today. So I'm excited about that, we'll see. Um, and then tomorrow's new start, I only have three new starts this week, guys. I'm ending out my, um, my mania. So I only have three new starts. That's okay, because then it'll give me plenty of time to work on some of the others. So tomorrow night, I'm going to start Fa La La by Madame Chantilly, and I have been wanting to start this since I got it in December. No, January. I believe Elizabeth Ann can stitch was stitching this, and I fell in love with it. It is so, so cute. I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count, no, 28 count, sorry, green sapphire, Cashel, Cashel linen. So it is this color. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a hard to see, but minty green. Can't see it that close. Maybe further away. You can kind of see that it's like a minty green color. It's gonna be so cute with all the called for DMCs. Except for I switched out the white to B5200 B from just regular white. So this is a good example of what my floss looks like because this is all kitted with my flosses that I already had in the hand. So we're gonna be changing things up a little bit in the Chamberlain world, in the Canal Town Stitchers world. Changing things up. All right, so that's gonna be Monday night start and then Tuesday night start for this week is Country Cottage Needleworks Bunny Hop. And I liked this pattern because it has a vintage feel to it and it's not, it doesn't have any pastels in it. <laughs> like I said, I'm not like a big fan of pastels, but I like the farmhouse and I liked the bunnies and the coloring on this. So here it is. This is Bunny Hop. Country Cottage Needleworks. It says hippity hop, hippity hop. And I am stitching this with all the called for colors. That includes all of the week's dye works that were called for as well. I ordered this from everythingcrossstitch.com because they were having a huge Country Cottage Needlework um, sale in the month of April. And I love Country Cottage Needleworks. I love them. They're like, I've, I've done several of their, their pieces and I'm working on several of their pieces and I just love them. And so I'm doing it on the called for cat, um, the called for fabric, which is um, 32 count, uh, right? 32 count antique. I messed this up because I, I took the piece out. I think. Where's the piece? Holy macro! It's right here in front of me. Oh my goodness! All right, it is going to be stitched on 28 count lamb's wool linen by Witchell. And now this is stiff. This is that stiff that they were talking about. But I'm not worried about it. I think I'm gonna like that because I think it's gonna be easier to finish. Like I said, like the stiffer fabric just feels like it's gonna be a little bit easier to finish. So those are gonna be my three new starts for the week and then that will end my new starts for May except for the piece that I designed yesterday in this morning. I finished it this morning. So I think that's all I have to show you for that stuff. All right, let's get into haul. So I didn't buy much. I didn't buy really anything yet. I'm actually on my way out in just a few minutes to go and um, see if I can find some linen 
for my piece, um, or actually Ada, I'm actually looking for 16 count Ada for my um, design piece that I just designed yesterday and to get some to more to get some more flosses so I'll be leaving to do that in a few minutes but um, I was at Walmart the other day and um, I made a couple of purchases to make some project bags so like I've said before I do make my own project bags I have tons of fabric I don't know why I bought more um, and I'm actually looking to um, to buy a couple of quilt patterns from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I'd like to quilt this week, or not this week, but this summer. I'd like to quilt this summer, um, especially if I can get my um, upstairs room situated to a point where I feel like I can actually get some work done in there. I have quilted in the past. I've made um, six uh, baby quilts and hand quilted them. And I have made a, um, a tote bag that I quilted and so I, oh, I've made a ton of doll quilts. I've made like four um, quilts for dolls. I really love those because they're patchwork and they're just so cute. They're so darn cute. One of these days I'll pull up some pictures and I'll show you some of the quilts that I made. And a couple of Fat Quarter Shop quilt patterns are like calling my name. So I'm feeling like I need to make a quilt. Um, however, I was at Walmart and I was actually looking for floss because sometimes when I'm desperate I go to Walmart to try to see if I can find some DMCs. They don't always have it. In fact, they have a very small um, DMC section. They used to have a lot more DMCs at Walmart, but they've really scaled back. But I think that they're going to be coming back because a lot of people are cross-stitching again uh, thanks to the pandemic. However, um, I saw some um, cute fabric that I wanted to get to make some project bags. So I'm going to make this project bag. I'm super excited about it. So this one is going to be, this is going to be the inside of the bag and this is going to be the outside of the bag. I just love these cute owls. They are so adorable. I love this pattern. And these are very reasonable. They're only $1.47 for a fat quarter at Walmart. And they're so, they're so cute. And so then, of course, I bought a zipper to go with it. And I already have the vinyl in my basement. So this will be a vinyl project bag. And then I also got this one to make a project bag with. So I bought this little nautical pattern. The anchors. So cute. This is a dark blue, so it's like navy. Show, it looks a little bit black in the picture, but it's blue. And then this is blue as well. So I'm gonna make this one with this on the outside and this on the inside. So you'll be able to see this through the vinyl. And I got a white um, zipper to go with this. So this is gonna be um, hopefully a project that I can get to maybe in the next week or two. I'd like to have these two bags done. And I make my bags Actually, I can show you one. Hang on, another moment where I'm gonna let you just hang out for just a quick second. Okay, so this was one of the very first project bags I ever made. And what I like about this is that it's a nine by 13 so that my upright patterns can fit in here. So actually all I have to do is just turn this around and then I can keep my pattern in here. So then the inside of this bag, this one is inside out the same. Let me take the pattern out so that, and I like project bags so that the whole um thing can fit so here's basically the project bag so this one i did the inside out the same but i did like a different on the front so and this one doesn't have this one has kind of a cheap vinyl on it so i'm gonna get i'm gonna invest in um like a stiffer vinyl but i didn't know like when I first started making them, this was my first one and I didn't know like if I was gonna like 
the stiffer vinyl with my machine, but I think it'll be just fine. So I plan to make lots more. I have tons of fabric, guys. Like, I didn't need to buy any more. I used to make doll clothes for my daughter when she had, um, she's 13 now, but she had two, um, like, Target American Girl dolls. I called them tar American Girl dolls because it's the easiest to reference, but they're like, they're called original OG. I don't know what they're called. Anyway. Um, I made her doll clothes, so I have tons of fabric. I am not hurting for fabric but then I see it and I buy more like I'm so addicted and my husband is like calling me out on it but anyway so look forward to seeing a couple of these in the near future with those two fabrics because I am going to make those all right so that was my only haul for the week so let's talk about the um let's talk about the uh, giveaway for last week so um, I only had one comment on my video so she is going to win this and the fabric so this was the giveaway and I believe her name let me just look it up real quick Her name is Lynn Anderson, so congratulations, Lynn. You are the winner of the Crazy for Cross Stitch magazine and the um, Ivory Ada, 12 by 18 piece of Ada. So congratulations to you. Um, I will be commenting on your comment and... Um, giving you my email address so that you can send me an email um, with your shipping information and I will do my very best to mail it tomorrow if I get it today. So congratulations. Um, I do not have a giveaway for this week. I have other giveaways that I'm going to give out, um, but not for this week. Um, so there's that. So congratulations, Lynn. Thank you so much for your comment. Um, I'm thrilled to have new subscribers. I didn't even say thank you at the beginning. I should. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking my videos. Um, I appreciate all of you that are out there that even click on it for just a second and listen to my voice for just a few minutes. Um, I love doing this, so even though I'm not a super huge floss tuber, um, I will be continuing to hopefully grow my channel and grow um, on Instagram. I am Kimberly.Chamberlain.14, so that's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y dot C-H-A-M-B-E-R-L-A-I-N dot 14. And I do post a lot of pictures on there. I'm pretty active on Instagram now. I wasn't before, but I am now. And it's mostly cross-stitch. You won't um, find anything really else on my Instagram account, account except for cross-stitch. So that's why I'm, like, I'm pretty much just using Instagram for that right now. And um, other than that, I hope everybody has a great stitchy week. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. Um, Please like and subscribe. Please check out some new floss tubers. If you put in floss tube number one, you will find a bunch of new people that have just started. Uh, I mentioned a bunch in my video last week that I am watching. Um, so please check them out and you know help support them by subscribing and liking their videos. And watching them brings me joy because I see so many different new patterns and I get so inspired and I just I'm I'm just so excited to be part of this community so thank you all so much and I hope you have a great stitchy week of May and I will see you again next weekend bye now